Hello everyone, welcome. My name is Richard and I think it's about time now for another market update. What's happening in the world of used electric car? Demand, prices, falling, dropping. The days are getting colder, shorter and gloomy, but is the world of used electric cars equally as gloomy or not? I can tell you we were very busy last month, but the data I'll show you in a minute is going to be from an independent source, something that any car dealer in the UK uh, can look up, basically, so from Auto Trader Market Insights. But there's also been some developments, so one of the biggest sources of cars in the UK is now uh, in the trade, has now started giving uh, battery health reports, so, uh, but is it necessary? Is it useful in the trade? Uh, how good are those checks? Well, I'll discuss some of that briefly in a moment as well. Like I say, it's getting a bit chilly and cold here, so I'm going to run up to my computer and have a look at some data first. Right, so here we are. I'll share my screen recording. This is uh, Market Insights from Auto Trader. This is not my data. This is data from the biggest UK online uh, used car marketing platform, Auto Trader. So any dealer could look at this background stuff. And I'm going to be looking at the last 13 weeks. It's taken us from mid-August, probably about when I last released the video about market conditions, uh, through to uh, the current day. So I'm recording this on the November the 11th uh, today. So let's have a look here. Market health is going to be the main thing. And in the middle here, we have electric cars, 10% up. And you can see some comparisons uh, uh, comparisons between diesel, petrol, petrol hybrid, plus 2%. Now, this is focusing on what's called market health. And now, if I drill down to this, I explain market health. Market health is essentially the balance between demand. So electric cars actually for this period is 51% up year on year. And this is what counteracts those headlines we see all the time where in newspapers you see headlines saying nobody wants electric cars, use electric car prices are plummeting, nobody wants them, demand's there, not there. Well demand is really there, look, 51% up, demand is really good. Uh, however, supply is much higher. I mean, as more and more electric vehicles saturate the marketplace, of course, the supply is there, and as always, there's more electric cars coming off of uh, lease companies, especially into the trade. So there's just a lot more of them. But we can see there, demand 51% up as an average, actually reasonably consistent over the last 13 weeks. A bit of a dip in supply here, but then coming back up again at the moment. All that leads to a, a sort of average um, here for market health of 10% up, a measure of supply and demand compared to the previous year. Uh, so that's actually pretty good. Now, if we looked, actually, if I clear this, let's just have a look out of interest at something like diesel, for example. It's good to get a comparison. Uh, so if I go to diesel here, it shows market health 19% up, um, which is pretty good. Again, fairly consistent, but demand is dropping. Look at that, look, minus 8%, but there's just less in supply. So again, as the proportion of new cars you know, uh, is lowering, there's less supply. Demand is uh, also down, but it leads to what looks like reasonable market health conditions. Uh, so anyway, let's go back to uh, electric. That's what we focus on here. And here we are. And we can have a look at some comparisons now. So market health between different manufacturers, Audi, BMW down, Cupra down, uh, Aura very much down with their funky cat, uh, Jeep Electric down, Lotus very much down. Uh, so you can see a few numbers there uh, struggling in the balance of what's called market health. So I say not always completely indicative. And it looks like the three to five year age band is also down 2%. Now, a lot of what we do here are Tesla, and they show 0%. So let's have a little bit of a drill down on this. And straight away, I can see there Model Y is in red. So market health is down on Model Y. Again, it's what I was saying in the last market health update is... Uh, we've seen Model Y prices actually really dropping recently. A couple of factors really driving this. One is Tesla have been offering some uh, reduced or 0% APR uh, deals, um, which has prompted a lot of people uh, to go and buy a new one. Lots more used cars coming onto the market. But also, there's a lot more used Model Ys coming off of lease companies now. So there's just a lot more of them. So let me drill down to this uh, red markings here in the Model Y. Now, demand, look, 73% up. It's not due to lack of demand. There is big demand for the Model Y, but it's just this huge supply here. Look, much more in the market compared to the previous year, 361% up. So uh, demand very much there, just lots more of them. So it leads to this uh, market health of negative 63%. Not brilliant. But it was the Model Y that stood out there. Uh, let's go back to Tesla's as a whole. 
and the staple diet is model three. So I'm going to look at them now. And we can see here market health is declining at the moment on model three. In fact, it's just come below neutral market. Again, demand up, reasonably consistent, some peaks and troughs there. Uh, looks like they're mid, mid uh, October. There was a, a strong demand there. Uh, and it goes up and down. The market always does anyway, within the month, uh, typically. So demand up 39%, supply also up and climbing. Again, more coming off of lease companies at three years old, for example. Now, these Model 3s, the 2021 cars, now typically 71 plate cars, are just fantastic used cars. We still sell a lot of them. And they're brilliant because you've got nice, clean cars with sensible mileage, still have test of full warranty, and you can buy them in around about the £25,000 mark in the current market. can be lower with higher mileage or higher with lower mileage, but a £25,000 2021 updated refresh Model 3 long range is just a brilliant value car. And the standard ranges as well. Of course, they're now the LFP battery ones, the 2021 cars. So... They're just brilliant used buys. We still buy and stock a, a, a many of them as we can, really. When we get a good one, I'll buy it. And um, they're a good staple diet. They come and go. There's strong demand in the trade. Now, we have to pay quite good money to get them. I did a video about how much we buy and sell them for. And, of course, you want to buy as cheap as you can. But sometimes you just have to go out. And on that video, I had to go out on a Monday when lots of other dealers are doing the same thing and just buy them. So it doesn't always leave a lot of margin, but typically, you know, a nice safe bet, turnaround, very reliable cars, little to go wrong. Uh, I'm just gonna clear the Model 3 filter now. Model S, let's have a look here, see how they're going. So pretty strong market health from them, up 65%. Demand minus one from this time last year, but reasonable, but just less in supply now. So actually their market health is showing as being pretty strong. We don't get so many Model S's or X's here now because as they do get older, um, there tends to be, you know, we have to be more picky with what we stock and what we get in. There's more risk to the S-Next for potential repairs as they get older. So they just fall a little bit out of our remit. And this is a good one. So if you see on our website, they'll be good ones. Um, market health there, 17% up. Demand wavering, pretty much zero. Yeah, there's zero over the previous year. And minus 13% supply. So S and X look quite good. Now, let's clear the Tesla filter before we finish with the market health here. Let's drill down to a couple of these. So we see a few Audis coming through here. Market health minus 15%. But look, again, it's not due to lack of demand. 24% up. It's just the supply. Many more around now. And when you get more supply, it typically means the prices are coming down and falling as many an owner would feel the pain of. Now, it's been an interesting one with, for example, Porsche and the Taycan. Uh, so market health is actually 45% up on them at the moment. There is a yeah, decline in market health again right now. Demand 84% up. I mean, there's some bargain uh, Taycans out there on the used market. But again, supply is just up there. Now, the premium electric cars especially suffer from depreciation. I've mentioned this before, but again, I always try and reiterate it. Why do these premium electric cars really drop in value over the first two or three years? Well, it's because of the type of buyers. Typically, the EQSs, the BMW i7s, the Audi Q8s, the Taycans, all those premium electric cars, the buyers would normally be buying through a business. When you buy through a business, there's tax incentives when you buy a new electric car, which means uh, they don't apply on used cars. They apply to new cars. So if I was going to spend £80,000 on a six-month-old Porsche or £100,000 on a new one, I would actually save 25% of £100,000 in tax uh, break on the new one. So it actually kind of cost less. Now, you do have to pay corporation tax back when you sell it at the selling price, but the headline sort of saving uh, on the new car means that it, you may as well buy the new one. It's the incentive to go and buy new cars, but it means that on the used market, it leaves that gap until they get down to the kind of 50 or 60,000 pound mark. There's a bit of sort of no man's land between that two and three year old one that then comes into the private buyer market and those new ones. Again, someone like myself, even if I was going to buy a tie can, I might as well get a new one because of the tax savings I can take retrospectively on that. Uh, so you will see a drop. I mean, e even then, though, you know, Mercedes S-Class, Audi A8s, they typically have depreciated rather rapidly anyway. Let's just have a quick look at a couple of others before we depart here, then. And Toyota, they don't really offer that too much in electric, do they? Uh, even, what do they call it, BRZ something? Don't see many of them. I uh, won't really uh, 
delve into that one too much. Let's have a look at BMW though, because we do see a few i4s, iX3s, good cars. Um, demand looks strong, 73% up, but the supply has been up, although it's falling now, look. Uh, so you can see there, as a result of that, market health is increasing. So maybe on the used market, BMW Electrics are a good bet at the moment. Uh, i5s are struggling because again they're just too new at the moment uh, so they've got to depreciate until they get to the private buyer segment much more. Uh, Citroen plus 82% here, that's interesting, that's a high number, the EC4. Oh, so we've had a couple of EC4s, quite like those little things. Um, nice ride comfort to them. Demand 20% up, not that many in supply, good market health, we've always sold them. They're nice little things and not too expensive to stock, you know, so uh, they're quite good. What else has got a standout number here? Lexus. 133% market health. So with the Lexus, they didn't really have much in the way of offering for electric cars. And what they do have isn't particularly amazing, I don't think. So I don't really come by too many of those, if I'm honest. Uh, any other standout numbers along here? Skodas look quite good there. Well, I'll tell you what's the mainstream one is Volkswagen. So let's go here. Uh, ID3, good, 35% up. My wife has an ID3, we rather like it, ID4. Performing strongly, 76% upper market health. Uh, so demand there, 64%. We do see quite a lot of ID3s and ID4s coming through. So let's lower down to ID3s. Demand 82% up. So we're seeing as these cars now get into the say 15,000 pound mark or under 20,000 uh, pounds, these kind of nice family cars that are electric. We are seeing demands there. A lot of people are now coming out of their um, say a ten thousand pound Nissan Qashqai and go into electric. The demands there, you can see that. And now that a lot of these electric cars have depreciated below twenty thousand pounds, it opens up to those buyers. So that depreciation does open up to more people and make it more affordable. It's just been a bit painful if you've owned one to date. Of course, when they get down to this kind of price segment, the depreciation is far less. So the cheaper they get, the less they depreciate. That's typically the rule. Uh, so we're seeing a lot more go into the family segment. And I must admit, sometimes those sort of cheaper end electric cars, MGs, uh, I'm driving an MG5 at the moment, fantastic car for £15,000. What a brilliant car it is as well. Very comfortable, superb ride. I make a video about that separately. So stay subscribed if you want to see that. Um, but we're seeing more of those cars become more affordable and therefore popular on the used family buyer for under £20,000. So I'm going down to Kia now because I wanted to have a quick look at the uh, e-Nero, for example. Uh, again, sub £20,000 popular family car. Now, uh, demand's been dropping for them, look. Uh, but they're good family cars. Supply is up as well, so market health is dipping. Interesting to see. Uh, so before we leave, let's have a quick look at the EV6. That looks like 65% market health. Although it's falling. Uh, demand strong supply, mm, getting short in supply. Less stock than the previous year, interesting. Okay, so there's an insight to the market health. Uh, again, as I often repeat really, demand isn't the issue. Demand is always increasing, it's it always increased. Typically, I mean, if I average it from looking at these videos, on top of my head, it's probably about 50% up year on year each time, you know, no matter when I look at it over the last couple of years. Uh, so demand's always been increasing. It's just the increase in amount of supply which can drive down the pricing. So uh, it will now be interesting as we now into November, we're gonna enter the pre-Christmas New Year period. It can go one of two ways. Typically it does go a bit quieter because at the end of the day, people focus on Christmas and New Year and buying presents and going on holidays at Christmas and stuff like that. So it can, uh, the whole used car market can dwindle a little bit in this time, but it'd be interesting to see what happens. So I will do an update again later in the year on that. <laughs> okay, take two. Okay, so let's come back now to uh, battery health tests for electric cars. So uh, a sort of increasingly popular subject. Um, and I'll try and run through a few things that's going through my mind here at the moment. So uh, one of the biggest uh, trade suppliers in the UK, uh, anyone in the trade will know, British car auctions uh, offload a large number of cars every single day. And many a car that sits on dealers' forecourts comes through British car auctions, lots of kind of ex-leased cars, cars from other companies, all that sort of stuff. So uh, on a lot of their electric cars, if not all of them going forward, they are now producing what's called a battery health report. And I want to mention this because battery health reports can be done in different ways, interpreted in different ways. And then, you know, let's have a discussion about how useful you think they are. So from a consumer point of view, 
they, uh, you know, it's a question a lot of people have asked over the years is, you know, what sort of state of health is the battery in? I think the longer you're around electric cars, actually the bit less concerned you are with that kind of stuff. Um, we've been able to test batteries on most electric cars here for a little while. We can continue to do so. If you start doing it for every single car, it actually just becomes quite a time consuming thing. And ultimately, the data you're given, you know, is that good, is that bad, is it below average, above average? You've got to take those into account. But, you know, uh, there are uh, different ways of interpreting the data as well. So whether the, the report that the BCA seem to be doing seems to be uh, basically pulling from the car what the car is telling about the battery health. Uh, and on some manufacturers, that will include uh, buffers and other cars, it won't. So, for example, you might see a Hyundai Kona's reading as 98% battery health. It's actually probably lower than that. It's probably 94, but it's the way they're calculating it, what the car is reporting rather than interrogating the battery itself. So you've got to take some of these with a bit of pinch of salt. Um, like I say, there's different ways of doing it. But I guess in the trade as a buyer, it's kind of useful and we'll probably start building up more comparisons and more idea over time of what's good and what's not so good. All this data is currently still being built up. Um, but will it then fade away? Is actually, actually, these things are generally okay. I mean, I've kind of got to that point where I can test the batteries and these testers and such like, but I don't typically do it on the basis that, look, if the battery's got a problem, the car's gonna tell me they're still under warranty. Um, there are some comparatives, you know, one battery can be a bit better than the other, but actually it doesn't tend to matter too much really. Uh, and battery degradation also isn't a linear curve. Typically you'll see a bit of degradation in the first 10, 20,000 miles, and then it really steadies off quite a bit after that. But there are influencing factors, how long it's been stored on very empty or very high charge, how often it's been DC fast charge could have some effect as well. And so there are different influencing factors that can affect battery health. And as a trade buyer or as a consumer buying cars from a dealer, uh, it can be reassuring to know what your car's got. You've got to then take into account, you know, is that good, bad, how does it compare? It's strange because we never did, you know, rolling road tests on every combustion car before selling it. Um, it again, it's just impractical. It is a lot easier with electric cars, but you still got to plug stuff in, read the data and all that sort of stuff. So um, there is a bit of time involved if you're going to start doing it for all your stock vehicles. And of course, battery health testing is something we'll see a lot more of. Um, in the used car trade with electric cars. Maybe in the future it actually then sort of starts fading away. You know, maybe people go, oh, actually this thing's generally okay. Anyway, it's kind of a big point of discussion, but I thought I'd just bring it up briefly in this video. Uh, right, I normally cover a bit about solar and other things, but I think we'll wrap it up for now on this video. I'll cover some solar stuff towards the end of the year, of course less sunlight, today is very gloomy, not so much production. Although I have switched over to another version of a business uh, tariff with Octopus, so we get some cheaper rates at night. In the day, it's set for between four and six when they then go up to a higher rate, but that's okay. We can use uh, electricity outside of those hours. So again, you can control when you charge and don't charge and stuff like that. So uh, actually it will help save. And if you've got a business, there are some different options um, for business electricity tariffs, whether you're solar or not solar. Anyway, that's it for this video. I uh, hope you found that useful, interesting and stay subscribed for more videos coming soon. We started filming some stuff showing the uh, restoration of a Model 3, for example, that was, you know, one of the not very nice ones when you collect it. Um, but one, you know, I bought one that needed a bit of work basically, so I could show you what we did to restore that car. So that'll be one of the videos coming up fairly soon, along with some other stuff about electric cars. So make sure you stay subscribed.